a very good evening to each and every single one of you. Happy Thursday. I welcome you to the Lady Berlin show with myself, Lady Berlin. We will hear what it is that God has to say to us this evening. What message has God prepared, nicely seasoned, marinated, cooking and ready to serve you and I, and I believe is going to be nothing but a blessing and an eye opener for us. For the word of God says that the seeds that were sown on good ground or in good ground, they germinated and bear fruit. And so I pray this evening that you prepare your heart to receive the seed of the word. Because when the seed of the word is received into a good ground, into a good heart, then it has the ability to grow and to bear good fruit. So get yourself ready, get yourself fired up, get your heart right. Today's message is quite poignant and it's to help us as we are about to enter into a new month and also to close one year and enter into a new year. I would like us to close our eyes and pray so that we can start. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this evening I want to give you thanks and I want to give you praise. It's always an honor to sit under your feet, to learn to sit under your feet, to be taught to sit under your feet, to be filled up in order to be poured out. I avail myself unto you. I ask you to fill me up and pour me out to your people. And Father, I pray and I lift each and every single person that will be joining this live stream even now and later on that will be watching. I pray that Father, you would connect your spirit to the word that you have prepared for us. May you sit us at your table and may you feed your word your word that is life may we receive life this evening to help us as we go into the new month of december the last month of 2023 and in preparation for 2024 we thank you and we bless you for what you're going to do through our lives this evening for your glory's sake in jesus mighty name amen and so this evening, I would like to share with us a message that I've entitled, Are You Prepared? So how many of us are prepared or are preparing towards 2024? Is it too early? For us to be talking about 2024, are you prepared for 2024? Okay. Maybe that's, that may seem a little bit distant, a little bit far off, right? Because you have a whole 30 days, 31 days left before 2024. So let's bring it quite close. How about December? We have, some of us have less than 24 hours left to enter into December 2023. So my question to you and I is, how prepared are we as we are about to enter into December? Are you ready for December? Okay. So why am I asking us this question? I'm asking this question because so many of us are praying, asking God, petitioning God. So many of us go to God with prayer requests. God, I want this. God, I want that. God, do this for me. God, open this door. But how prepared are you and I for the very thing that we are asking of God. I don't know what kind of prayer request you have placed before God. 
Are you prepared for it? And so I would like you to turn with me to the book of 2 Kings. The book of 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 16. To verse 17. So 2 Kings chapter 4, 4, verse 16 to verse 17. Let's see what the word of God says. The Bible says, Then he said, About this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. 17 but the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which elijah elisha had told her so this is the story of the shunammite woman elijah the pro elisha the prophet said to the woman about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And the woman thought that the prophet was lying to her. Why? Because she has waited so many years, probably done everything she know how to, try the IVF and everything else, and nothing seemed to be happening. And now, She's at the point where she has given up on her dream. And you come and tell me, give me a word, that a year by this time, I will embrace a son. Are you sure? Do not lie to me, man of God. But the Bible says, the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come. So the woman conceived and bore a son exactly as the prophet had prophesied to her. Okay, now let's look at another Bible quotation. I'd like you to turn your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 18. And let's look up from verse 10. Again, the word of the Lord says, And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, when you jump to verse 14, the Bible says, Is anything too hard for the Lord at the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son and then again when we look at Genesis chapter 17 and from verse 15 the Bible says then God said to Abraham as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. 16. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. So this is God's promise to Abraham and Sarah. And yet, there is no evidence of a child. God is promising Sarah that she's going to be a mother of nations. And yet, not even a single child had she born. So my message today is, are you prepared? I don't know what it is you have placed before God. I don't know what kind of prayer request. You are petitioning God on. As the year comes to an end, as we enter the last month of 2023, 
I don't know what kind of expectation you had for 2023. I don't know what kind of prophecies you received. I don't know what kind of word was spoken into your life that seemed to still be hanging. My question to you and I is, are you prepared? Are you prepared for what it is God is promising you? Are you prepared for what it is you're praying and asking of God? Are you prepared for it? And so when we look at Genesis chapter 17, we saw how God is promising Abraham. I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. I will make you a great nation. You will be father of many nations. Your offspring. God is making all these promises to Abraham. And yet, there is no evidence. Not a son. By the time God is saying, the first time God made this promise to Abraham, the Bible makes us to understand that Abraham was at the age of 75 years. And that's Genesis chapter 12. Abraham was 75 years. By the time God fulfilled that prophecy that our, your, your, your wife Sarah will conceive and bore a son the bible says abraham was a hundred years old so from the age of 75 to a hundred that is 25 year interval 25 years why did it take that long because when elisha prophesied to the shumamite woman he said a year about this time next year you would conceive and bore a son the bible makes us to understand in second kings that the following year the woman had bore a son but god promises abraham in genesis chapter 12 i will bless you i'll make you a great nation at the age of 75 and it takes 25 years before abraham or Sarah, Abraham and Sarah have their first child, Isaac. I believe that whenever God wants to do something, he will send a word to an individual through, whether it's through prophecy, whether it's through an angel of God coming to, in the Bible times, the angel of God will appear to Abraham. The angel of God will appear to the prophet. God will come and give you the word. So that when you have received the word, you begin to prepare yourself for that which God is promising you. You begin to make yourself ready for what it is God wants to do in your life. Because when you look at the book of Luke chapter 1. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Luke chapter 1 and verse 17. The Bible says, He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So before Jesus will come forth, the Bible makes us to understand that John the Baptist came forth with the spirit of Elijah to prepare us in order for us to be ready for what it is the Lord was coming forth to come and do. So whatever it is that you have placed before God, whatever request that you're making in prayer, are you prepared? Are you readying yourself to be able to receive the promise? Some of you are praying and asking God to bless you with a job. What kind of preparation are you making for that job? What kind of research are you making? 
Are you finding out about the company? Are you finding out about the position that you're going in there to go and do? What preparation are you making in readiness for that next move, for that next level, for that next open door? What preparation are you making? Some of you want God to bless you with the fruit of the womb. You are praying. You are asking God for a child like Sarah, like the Shumamite woman. You want a baby. What kind of preparation are you making? Are you putting in place? How are you making yourself ready for that which you are asking God to give you? What kind of changes in lifestyle, what kind of changes in your diet are you putting in place to help your body to be able to adjust itself and align itself in order to be able to receive a seed as the woman? You want a wife, you want a husband. What kind of preparation are you making to be able to embrace the man or the woman that God sends your way? What preparation? What do you know about marriage? What do you know about keeping a home, maintaining a home? What do you know about relationship? What do you know about what makes marriage work? What do you know that is preparing you for what it is you are asking God to bless you with? You are a woman. You want a successful man. What preparation? Are you making so that when that man comes, you know how to handle the man? You are a man. You want a woman. You want a go-getter. You want a woman that's forceful. What kind of preparation are you making to make sure that when the woman comes, you'll be able to embrace, to work with her? What knowledge, what new information are you finding out about the kind of man, the kind of woman you want? You want a woman that's a go-getter. You want a woman that is an alpha male. Do you know how to handle a woman that is an alpha male? Because she may not. She is not your typical housewife. She is not your typical, your typical woman that will be staying at home, taking care of everything. She is a woman with almost a masculine energy. A leader. How prepared are you? Do you know how to work with such woman? If God should send her your way. You want a man that has everything. How prepared are you when he comes? How are you prepared? Do you know that having everything, a man that can afford you everything means that he would barely be at home? Are you ready for that? Are you prepared mentally? Are you prepared emotionally? Are you prepared physically and are you prepared spiritually to receive that which you are asking God for? How spiritually aligned are you to find? The Bible says he that finds a wife. How spiritually aligned are you? To find her. Do you know what it is you're looking for? Because in order for you to be able to find her, you must know what it is you're looking for. Because if you don't know what it is you're looking for, when, when it presents itself, how do you know this is it? If you went to the shop, and you don't know what it is you're going there to go and buy. What do you leave the shop with? 
Anything? How prepared are you? Do you know what you're seeking for? Most of us, especially in the area of relationship, our focus is so much on the physical, forgetting that it takes more than just the physical. It's not just about the physicalities of the individual, of the man or the woman. It's all important, but it's not just that. Spiritually, how aligned are you? Do you all believe? Do you have the same belief concepts? Are you all spiritually mature to understand the things of God? Emotionally, do you have emotional intelligence to contain some of the things she may do or he may do that you might not necessarily like? Do you have the emotional intelligence so that even when you're triggered, you know how to manage your triggers? Are you prepared? Have you been, have you gone through the necessary counseling, therapy, in order to heal from past hurts so that you're not carrying those baggages to your next relationship so that you're not going to turn the next man or woman into a victim because of your brokenness from previous relationship how prepared are you for the next level that you're asking god to open to you do you know who you are do you know your purpose? Do you not know that if you don't know who you are and your purpose, it's hardly that you will be able to locate the right woman because she's supposed to be your helpmate. So if you don't know who you are and what your purpose is, you will not be able to find the right woman that aligns with your purpose that will be able to help you. It's not just about getting hooked to everybody. It's not just about seeing something that is nice. She's beautiful. She has all the physique. It's not that a woman is the help meet. It's you marry because of destiny. What is the destiny or the purpose that God has assigned you? The woman is coming into your life to come and help you to be able to achieve and fulfill that. So if you don't know your purpose, more likely you're going to pick the wrong woman and so a lot of time a lot of men will pick women based on their present circumstance their present lifestyle and then later on when they discover who they are when they align with purpose they realize that the woman now they'll say we are not compatible how prepared are you You want a child. You want to be a parent. How prepared are you? What do you know about raising children? Some of us are carrying childhood wounds. Some of us are coming from broken homes. Some of us experience such abuse as children. We haven't healed from it. And if you don't heal from it, you're more likely to pass it on to your children. There are so many adults that promise themselves because of what it is they experience as children that when I have a child, I'm never going to allow my child to go through what I experience. I'm never going to do that to what my parents did to me, to my child. And then guess what? As if history had just repeated itself. They are now parents. And the very thing they promised they are never going to do to their child. For unknown reason, they are finding themselves due. Because they have not been healed. How prepared are you towards parenthood? Your siblings' children. Your friends' children. Maybe they, you know... They trust you with them. How do you treat them? Other people's children. How do you treat them? You want a child. You want God to bless you with the fruit of the womb. How do you treat other people's children when they are not looking? I remember some years back.
my sister and I, when we lived with my dad and my stepmom. My stepmom at the time had two boys. And so there were four children, two boys and then my sister and I. But my stepmom really wanted, a, I believe she really wanted a girl because she'd already had two boys and she really wanted a girl. And I remember my dad saying to her, you want a girl. God has blessed you with two step daughters and you mishandled them. How do you expect that you will get your own baby girl? Some of you may not have fruit of the womb. But you find yourself in an environment where other children, you have the opportunity to instill into other children, to help raise other children. How do you treat them? Some of you have your privilege to live a lifestyle where you have made servants, house help. How do you treat other people's children? Because it's not about the people, you know. It's about God. And the Bible makes us to understand that there is nothing hidden from him. So because you think that nobody is looking on, you better remember that God sees everything. And when God is not pleased with what you're doing, there is no way he's going to bring you into your own. So when you don't learn, when you don't know how to treat other people's children, don't ever think that God is going to give you one of your own. Because as you do unto others, the Bible says, it shall be done unto you. You want your own house. How are you treating other people's property? The property, the house that you've rented, how are you taking care of that house? Because you see, what we don't understand is that before God will bring you into the promise, he must prepare you. And he doesn't prepare you with the promise. He prepares you with other experiences, other people. You want your own company. You want to be a CEO. You want to be an entrepreneur. You work in someone else's company and you're treating that company as if it's nothing. You turn up anytime you want. You have no discipline, no professionalism. When your boss is not looking, you do whatever you like and God is looking at you and thinking, really? And you think I will promote that? I will bless that? You think I will stamp that? Some of you are stuck where you are, not because of a curse. You are stuck where you are or your prayer is not being answered because you have not proven to God that you will be a good steward to that which he blesses you with because what he's already using to train you, you haven't taken good care of it. And you think it's about other people. Your boss is so mean. So when he's not about, you treat the workplace like anyhow. God is watching you. Because tomorrow, you want to be your own boss. You want your own company. And God is saying, no. You have not proven to me that you are a good steward. You drive other people's car. You treat the car like anyhow. You want God to bless you with your own. You better think again. Hmm. You want. You see, God, the Bible says that he's a good father. He's a responsible father. God is never going to give you anything that he doesn't know. For sure, you can take care of it. You can manage it. The first thing God said to Adam is dress the garden and keep it. So what is God entrusting to you? As a form of training in preparation for that which he wants to release unto you. 
the real thing because when you don't qualify the training when you don't pass the test there is no way he's going to release that blessing to you i don't know what it is you have placed before god as a request i don't know what you're praying and petitioning god for but look around you look around you is it possible that god is training you with other things in preparation you better take it serious you don't need people to be looking on before you do what you know is right for you to do because even when nobody is watching god sees all things and he is ultimately the bible says the lifter up of men he is the one that rewards no man so that boss that is not treating you well that boss that talks to you and mishandles you anyway don't worry because it's not about the boss it's about where god is taking you there's a reason why god has placed you there you see that landlord that treats you like trash don't worry it's not about them and god has intentionally placed you there because he's training you for your own that sister that sibling's child that they live they live with you for, uh, for you know for some hours for whatever it is that you can't be bothered to watch over don't worry god is watching you and until you pass his test there is no way he's going to bring you into your own you don't believe me check the story of joseph everything about joseph was in preparation for where it is God was taking him. And when Joseph proved himself that he could be a good steward, he said to Pharaoh, when Pharaoh's wife con you know, consistently pursued him, wanting to sleep with him, the Bible says that Joseph said, no way. There is no way I can do this to my master. This man has been so good to me. Yes, he may not be around. He has given me access to everything except his wife and there is no way i can pay good with evil and bible say he he ran he ran what he didn't know was that god was preparing him to make him the prime minister to a foreign or the prime minister in a foreign country what is god training you with and what is it that God is using to test your stewardship that you're failing? What is it? What is it? I said to this message is, are you prepared? It's easy for us to go before God with all our prayer requests. God, I want this. God, open this door for me. God, give me this promotion. God, give me this man. God, give me this woman. God, open this door for me. Are you prepared? Are you ready for what you're asking God for? How prepared are you? what new information are you taking in because god will not give you anything beyond what your capacity can contain he's not going to give it to you because you asked him for it if your capacity cannot contain what is you're asking of him he will not bless you beyond what you can contain so the prophet said to the the widow Go and borrow vessels. The oil, Bible makes us to understand, the oil kept flowing until there was no more. So God will give you, based on the level that you are at, based on your capacity. And so if you want more, you must expand. Whether spiritually, 
psychologically, emotionally, whatever it is, you want blessings, you want money, you want God to bless you financially, you better expand your financial capacity. That means, you know, create avenue for multiple streams of income. That also means that you must learn about how to manage your finances. Because if you don't, God knows if I give it to you, you are going to abuse it. You are not going to be a good steward of it. So some of us, God is holding, our prayer is being held. Or the answer to our prayer is being held. Not because God doesn't want to do it, but because we have not prepared. We are not ready for what we are asking God for. You're not ready for the child. You're not ready for the house. You're not ready for the promotion. Be honest with yourself. Some people want to travel abroad. So many people from back home. They want to travel abroad. They want to seek for greener pastures. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. How prepared, how ready are you? What do you know about the land that you want to travel to? What have you learned? What do you know about the people? What do you know about the culture, about the language? What do you know? What research are you doing? Some years back, two young men set off from Ghana to come to U Europe, UK. They came, they want to study and all these things, you know. They are very optimistic about their future in, 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 in the UK. They got here. They got a bit stranded at the airport. And so my mom took one and my brother took the other one. So that they didn't end up getting deported back home. So the one that my mom took in, we lived with as our brother. He wanted to go and study and everything. My mom, my mom was sitting down and asking questions. What preparation? What have you done to prepare? You want to be, a, you want to study. Do you have the finance to pay for your student tuition? Do you have the money? No. So how do you expect yourself to go and study? Can you afford the international fee they're going to be charging you? No. So how? Do you want to be a student? So you just got an idea, jumped on the plane, and then you came here. I'm coming to learn. I'm coming to study. I'm coming to work. What preparation did you make? So my mom, my mom advised him, you know, you can live here with us for free. I'm not going to charge you anything. You are young, very energetic. Get a job doing work give yourself the next year or two work compound your earning save your earning i don't need i don't need any of your money save the money so that when you start studying you can afford the tuition fee and you will find yourself in financial difficulty so that now you can concentrate on your studies because you have to put in so much hours to work and earn in order to pay your fee. Initially, he thought it was a bad idea. He thought my mom doesn't want him to pursue what it is he had planned. But fortunately for him, he listened. Today is history. He was able to finish his studies. They took him on placement and the company employed him after his studies. He's now married. He's got children and he's doing beautifully well in Scotland. Sometimes you have an idea. The idea is great. It has the potential to break through. But without preparation, without planning, you're setting yourself to fail and it wasn't because the idea wasn't great because you were not prepared so it's not that the man or the woman you got married to was wrong you did not prepare for the marriage not the wedding so many people prepare for the wedding but they have no clue about marriage five months down the line they are changing their mind no this is not the man or the woman i married this is not what i bargained for what did you know about marriage what did you know about compromising what did you know about maintaining a home before you got yourself entangled in marriage what did you know 
What books are you reading about marriage? What books are you reading about parenthood? What books are you reading about managing time, about managing people? What books are you reading to expand your capacity in readiness for that which you are asking God to bless you with? And so I believe that a lot of the delays that we are experiencing or the hold back is not as a result of the devil, no witch, nothing. It's because of our lack of preparation. We have not built the capacity for that which we are asking for. And because you and I cannot lie to God, He is not moved by our many words. He sees far beyond even what we can see. And he knows you're not ready for what you're asking for. You know, I, I remember a couple of years ago, you know, I was in a relationship and then the man wants to marry me. And then suddenly I was, I was wondering, oh my God, what do I know about marriage? Now I was running to books to learn about marriage. Some of us, that's what we do. We wait for the opportunity before now we want to learn we want to expand our capacity and sometimes it might be too late you prepare ahead you don't prepare when you are in the moment you don't prepare when the door opens they say when preparation meets opportunity is preparation meeting opportunity you don't meet opportunity before you prepare you don't meet that man or the woman before you go and learn about marriage before you go and learn about temperament before you go and learn about you know how different backgrounds belief systems you don't wait to learn the job before you go and learn about the position you don't wait to become a manager before you learn about how to manage people it will be too late and you're more likely to abuse that opening you prepare before So when you look at the book of Mark chapter Mark chapter 2 verse 22 I hope this is serving someone this evening Mark chapter 2 verse 22 the Bible says and no one pours new wine into old wine skin otherwise then wine will burst the skin and both the wine and the new wine skin will be ruined no they pour new wine into new wine skin you cannot go into your new level your next level with the same be old belief system with the same old self you cannot get into that new relationship with the same old self that didn't work in the previous relationship you must be able to have time for yourself and critique analyze what did i do what what went wrong in the old relationship what did i do how did i contribute because it takes two how did i contribute to my marriage not working what did i do or not do that caused my marriage not to work you must be able to come to that conclusion because if you don't know how things went wrong if you don't know what you did for things not to work you're more likely to repeat the mistake in the next relationship and how funny is it that you know people end up relationship upon relationship upon relationship and sometimes my beautiful ladies will say will use will say will make a statement like oh sorry all men are dogs it's not that all men are dogs you have not learned your mistakes to know what worked and what didn't work so that you prepare yourself so that you mature yourself so that where your weakness is you will develop your weakness so that the next relationship history does not repeat itself you want a child you're not doing anything to prepare your body to be able to take in the seed my women you're not doing anything to to help your womb to be able to take in the seed you want to still live your same old lifestyle it's the same you know 
and maintain the same eating habit, maintain the same lifestyle, and then expect that the womb will be able to take a seed. The man expect that you'll be able to impregnate your wife. It's not going to happen. You must. There must be something new. If the old way worked, we won't be where we are. If the old, if the old you worked, you won't be broken hearted. You won't be divorced. You won't be childless. You won't be jobless. If the old you, if everything you know now works, you will not find yourself in the position that you are in, that you don't like, that you are now praying and petitioning God for a change, for a new direction. And so in order for God to bring you that change and that new direction, you must know and you must be honest and sincere with yourself to admit that my everything about my old self may not be enough. Sometimes it's not that there's something wrong with it. It's just not enough and you must add more. Sometimes there's something wrong with it and you must change things. Sometimes you must change your habits sometimes you must change your behavior sometimes you must adopt new ways of doing things new habits new behaviors you must learn you must develop yourself you must expand yourself physically spiritually emotionally in preparation and in readiness for what it is you're asking god for because if not When God said to Abraham, I will bless you, your offspring. Bible makes us to understand that Abraham was 75. By the time Abraham and Sarah had Isaac, Abraham was 100. When you're not prepared, something God may have promised you about a year by this time. And like Abraham, it may take you 25 years. Now, whatever your age is, right now add 25 years to it whatever your age is add five years to it. do you have that time to waste do you have that time do you have that flexibility to be going around in circle do you have that flexibility to be repeating the mistake to be repeating the pattern at what point are you going to admit to yourself and do yourself justice and say enough is enough let me be honest with myself i must change i have a nasty behavior my character stinks and i must learn i must let go I must develop new. I must adopt a new habit. You can't keep blaming other people for your own mess. You can't keep blaming. You can't point the finger at other people. When you know the truth. First time, yes. Second time, maybe. Third time, yo, you better look at yourself in the mirror. You are the problem. And as the sooner you admit it and do something about it, the better it is for you. If you're going to come into the fullness of what it is God has prepared for you and I. And some of you. You want to go into the next level with the old mindset that created the problem in the first place. You got married. Few months, a year, maybe a couple of years. Now all hell has broken loose. You and the woman, you and the man, you can't even stand each other. You've divorced. You've gone your separate ways. You've jumped into the next relationship. That's just going to be about rebound. The same old mindset that created the problem cannot, does not have what it takes to resolve it. If there's not a shift within the paradigm, if you don't learn something new, if you don't, be honest with yourself and stop allowing your ego to drive you. For some of us, everyone else is wrong apart from us. 
we are always right everyone else is wrong that's why you keep producing the same results no women every woman nowadays women don't want to submit yes that's why you keep repeating the same pattern how many women must you go through how many how many broken marriages how many failed relationships how many jobs have not worked how many more do you want to go through before you admit to yourself perhaps i may be the problem let me take some time off let me sit down and let me see let me trace back let me check myself when you begin to see that certain things are becoming a pattern in your life whatever area of your life you can't keep on blaming other people you can be lying to yourself and think the problem is external of you it's internal you are the problem because no two people are the same no two women are the same no two men are the same so this man or woman treated you the same way you got into the next relationship the same way the third relationship the same way you there is something wrong with you you are the problem you are either doing something wrong or not doing something one way or the other but more likely you are the problem that's why you keep repeating the pattern you move from one church to another church to another church from one job to another job to another job it seems it's the same treatment you are the problem you better own up i'm sorry to be very blunt and unless we can be honest with ourselves and take ownership and choose to do something learn it's never too late to learn something new if what you have is working for you awesome keep it if you know what you have is not working for you if you know where you are it's not working for you if you know where you find yourself in it's not working for you then you must know you must give yourself time to figure out why it's not working for you then find out when you have found out why it's not working for you then put the necessary measures put the necessary obtain you know learn give have the necessary information the right information put the right structures in place so that the outcome the output will change you cannot put the same your input cannot be the same and expect a different output they say it's only insane people insanity is when you do the same thing and expect a different result if you want a different result you must be willing to change the input because it's what comes out is as a result of what goes in if what goes in changes then what comes out doesn't have a choice when you learn how to treat people right when you learn how to manage people right when you learn how to manage your finances right when you learn how to respect when you learn how to speak with people when you learn how to nurture then even the universe would open up because you have proven yourself a good steward genesis god said to adam after god had created everything he said dress the garden and keep it dress and keep it if you dress it some men will marry women and then later on down the line i don't find her attra attractive i'm no longer attracted to my wife i'm no longer attracted to my partner and all these things she's putting on too much weight he's putting on too much weight and all these issues the bible says dress it and keep you don't like it dress it you don't like it it's because you failed to dress it dress it so that you will like it dress the home so that you like it even though it doesn't belong to you because it's in your dressing and likening it that god will now bring you your own 
I have not finished the message, but I want to respect our time. And so I want to end it here and trust God next week. Don't just be so eager to go into 2024, maybe because 2023 has not been fair to you, has not, you know, been good to you. So you can't wait to just be done with it and go into 2024. Don't rush into it without preparing because it's 12 months in the year and the year is full of all kinds of things. You must make sure you are prepared to be able to contain all that the year has for you. There are so many people that started 23 with 2023 with us, and some of them are not around. Some of them have lost their mind. Some of them, their bodies are sick. Some of them have passed on. If you don't prepare yourself in order for your capacity to be able to contain all that the year has for you whether it's spiritually whether it's psychologically whether it's emotionally whether it's physically if you don't prepare for what is ahead of you for what is coming for the new year that is coming for the new month of december that is coming if you don't expand your capacity and if you go in with the same old you you better make sure that that old wine skin can contain the new one because if it can't the bible says both of them will be damaged i pray and i hope that this message are you prepared has spoken to you i pray that this message has helped you in one way or the other Come back and listen to it again because it's the word of God and it's living. Come back. The next time you listen to it again, it will mean, it will feed new information to you. And if this word has blessed you, don't sit on it. Spread the word. Share the message. Follow the page, Lady Berlin Show. Follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help grow this platform so that so many more lives can be transformed, can be touched, and God can have his way with people in the name of Jesus. And with your permission, I would like to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this evening, I thank you and I bless you for your word. Are you prepared? You have given us this message because you want us to prepare this time before we go into the next year, 2024. You want us to prepare in order for us to, before we go into December, because I don't know what kind of plans you have for us. I don't know what promises are still lingering over people that you are yet to bring to pass. But I know that you are speaking your word to us so that if we would prepare, then you will watch over your word and perform them in our lives. And I pray, that every hearer of today's message, that you will give us the grace to prepare ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically in readiness for that which you have for us in December and in the new year. I thank you for each and every single person's life, I pray that you will bring us back here again next week, Thursday, to complete this message. And even in the course of that time, I pray that you would, you would even advance and you would expand this revelation in the name of Jesus. I thank you and I cover each person with the blood of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to have shed your word with us in jesus mighty name amen i pray you have a blessed week whatever your hand finds to do i pray that god would bless it in the mighty name of jesus